کلوپ ملی خبرنگاران در واشنگتن کنفرانس برای ارائه گزارش تحقیقی و مستند درباره ارتکاب جنایت علیه بشریت در اشرف سیوم اکتبر 2013 هشتم آبان 1392 باراک اوباما از کسی در کاخ سفید پذیرایی می کند که مرتکب جنایت علیه بشریت شده است Hi, we want to welcome all of you to the National Press Club on what I believe will be an interesting newspaper maker. Uh, Jared Genzer is the chair of uh, Perseus Strategies, a human rights organization. He is also the attorney for a number of Nobel Prize winners, including Desmond Tutu and others. Um, Colonel uh, Cantwell is a veteran of both Iraq and Afghanistan. Today on the eve of Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki's visit to Washington, we released a major new report on what happened on September 1, 2013. Our report offers a clear and simple conclusion. President Obama is welcoming to the White House a man who is responsible for the commission of crimes against humanity in Iraq just two months ago. Um, to carry out an independent investigation to the massacre and to put our findings into this report. The facts here were gathered from individual interviews with all 42 survivors of the massacre, uh, reports from credible news organizations, video evidence gathered from the residents, including from many of those that were actually murdered and who were courageously filming the unfolding events before being killed and whose mobile phones were actually found in their hands on their dead bodies. Uh, and consultations with three former U.S. military commanders at Camp Ashraf, including uh, Colonel Cantwell. Percy Strategies also contacted the Iraqi ambassador to the United States um, and to obtain and understand uh, the views of the Iraqi government. Uh, and unfortunately, we never received a response to that request for further information. The victims of the massacre were members of the PMOI, the People's Mujahideen Organization of Iran, Despite having been previously designated as asylum seekers by the UN High Commissioner for, uh, for Refugees and as protected persons under the Fourth Geneva Convention by coalition forces during the 2003 Iraq War, the residents have suffered numerous abuses at the hand of the Iraqi government. The most recent attack is the fifth to occur over the past five years. In piecing together the accounts from the 42 eyewitnesses and video evidence, there were roughly 120 attackers armed with AK-47s, armor-piercing bullets, handguns, and explosives who entered the camp from the east, the west, and the north. From the east and west, Iraqi military and police assisted the attackers to enter the camp, and from the north, police watched through binoculars as they entered over an embankment. Uh, and you can see the entry routes on map two on page 12. Once in the camp, they broke up into smaller teams to conduct the assault in a concentration of the residents that is in an area of less than uh, 0.3 square miles. Now let me discuss why it is not only fair, but that the overwhelming weight of the evidence implicates the Iraqi government. First, stories about the massacre from CNN, Radio Free Europe, and Radio Liberty, and Reuters cite Iraqi government sources within 24 hours of the attack, confirming that it was, in fact, Iraqi forces who conducted the attack. Their story later changed, but three independent and reputable news organizations cited to Iraqi government sources for acknowledging their role in the attack and in the abduction of the seven hostages. Second, since taking over the control of Camp Ashraf from coalition forces in 2009, the Iraqi government has stationed 1,200 soldiers and police in, around, and outside the camp. Tahar Boumedra, the former chief UN uh, human rights officer uh, for UNAMI, said this, Ashraf is a highly fortified camp where nobody can penetrate into the camp without the active preparation and support of the Iraqi police and army. Boumedra's conclusion is supported by the statements of three former U.S. military commanders of Camp Ashraf, including, of course, uh, Colonel Cantwell here, uh, General Phillips, and Colonel Wesley Martin, all of whom have deep personal experience working in Ashraf and working uh, in partnership with Iraqi uh, government representatives uh, in the U.S. role at the time from 2003 to 2009 in making sure the camp was safe. Colonel Nahad, the commander of the RDF forces, one of the units stationed at Camp Ashraf, was actually at the Lions Gate to the west uh, as the attackers made their way into Ashraf, and several of the residents observed him watching uh, as uh, they entered the camp. General Jamil, Colonel Nahad's boss, made a highly unusual late-night visit to the camp just before the attack took place, several hours before, 
And as the attack was underway, two UNAMI representatives, Mohammed al-Najjar and Francesco Mota, were in touch with General Jamil, um, the commander of Diala Province Police, who reported to them that nothing was going on in the camp. The attackers uh, entered the camp with direct and unequivocal assistance of Iraqi policemen. This was witnessed by numerous residents. That included uh, at the uh, to the east um, uh, in Tulip Square, where uh, several of the residents witnessed uh, two Iraqi police officers, one getting into the two vehicles that were blocking the entrance to the camp. Um, it was the only uh, way to get into the camp um, uh, from the outside uh, and moving those vehicles so that the attackers could enter. Um, and uh, uh, and again, um, you know, these attackers pulled right up to literally right alongside the station police at this outpost, um, and they were welcomed with open arms to come into the camp. The attackers who were speaking in Arabic with an Iraqi accent wore uniforms identical to those worn by the Interior Ministry's Golden Division, which is a special forces division. Um, Brigadier General uh, Phillips and Colonel Martin believe this and other evidence proved that it was special forces who carried out the attack. Um, Colonel Cantwell has also concluded that it was Iraqi forces that conducted the attack. The Iraqi police station inside the camp were watching from a high vantage point throughout the attack with binoculars as it was being undertaken. The Iraqi police failed to answer numerous telephone calls uh, when, uh, when the residents in Ashraf tried to contact them for help. Based on the evidence, the government of Iraq has committed numerous violations of international law. Violations include crimes against humanity under customary international law, which is binding on all states, and provisions of three treaties to which Iraq is a party. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the Convention on Torture and Other Cruel and Human Integrating Treatment, and the Fourth Geneva Convention. Under customary international law, the acts of murder and torture constitute crimes against humanity because in this case they were widespread and systematic, part of policy choices made by the Iraqi government, directed against the civilian population. Um, and of course, uh, crimes against humanity shock the conscience, and this attack and the way that it was conducted does precisely that. To conclude, we, the United States, promised to protect these people and have failed in fulfilling our responsibilities. Our country's reputation and credibility are at stake. And while major mistakes have been made, we can change the outcome for the some 3,100 residents and souls who remain in Camp Liberty. Now is the time to act. Thank you.